Hi, so this video walks through the first worksheet in chapter 5 dealing with linear functions. So we're looking at a uh, connection between proportionality and linear functions. So one thing, um, I am assuming that um, that y, uh, I'm assuming that you know um, some basics about linear functions, right? Like y equals mx plus b, right? Where m is my slope and b is the y-intercept. Right. Also, slope, remember, is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, right? So in other words, on a graph, right, if we have a visual representation, if this is my line, my, my, my graph function, then this point is the y-intercept, right? So this has the coordinate uh, 0, b, Right? So when x is 0, y is this b value. And then if I wanted to find the slope between, let's say, the intercept and some point out here, then here, this is the change in y, and this is the change in x. Right? So in other words, this is change in y over change in x. So, we're, so, it's a rate, uh, so slope is a ratio between um, the, the change in, in height and um, and the horizontal change, right? So this is also often referred to as rise over run, right? Where rise is the vertical change and run is the horizontal change, right? So again, I'm expecting that you're you're comfortable with this, and we're extending upon this this previous knowledge um, to make it college level, right? So you should have learned this um, middle school, high school, or if you took one of our prerequisite courses like Math 910, Mathematical Literacy. Uh, you would have went over this material. Or if you're placed into this class with the co-rec, you, you'll go over this material also, right? So here's a worksheet that we're working through, and there's one, um, number one is done for us as, as a guide, and then um, they would like us to complete the, the following three examples, right? So you can read over number one on your own. Um, I'm not gonna go, go through it since it's already uh, done for you, um, so to save save um, time, I'm going to jump to number two. All right, so number one is done for us very nicely, and we're going to use this as a guide to do, do number two. So number two says the weight of water is proportional to the volume at a rate of eight pounds per gallon. All right. So when we practiced doing this a little bit previously, right, being able to take a proportional relationship and write it in the form of y equals k times x, right? So you, we did practice with this, where k is my constant of proportionality, right? But if we compare this to this equation, notice that k and m are the same, right? So in other words, the constant proportionality is the slope if related to a linear equation. And notice here there's no there's nothing added to. So your your b is zero, right? So in other words, the connection here is that when we have a proportional relationship, so a proportional relationship, so something that's truly proportional, my slope is going to be equal to uh, my constant proportionality k, and the intercept is always zero. Right, so so this is always true. Something is completely proportional. Right, so we're gonna um, explore this. Right, so looking at number two, um, I'm gonna use the variables w for the weight of the water. So w equal the weight, and I'm going so let w equal the weight of the water, and I will use uh, v for the volume. Right, so it's always important to identify your variables. Right? So to write this equation, uh, we could say w equals 8 times v. Right? And we can double check to make sure I have the variables in the right spot, right? Because 8 is in pounds per gallon, and volume would be in gallons. Right? So when I if I multiply these, my gallons go away, I'm left with pounds, which is what weight would be, right? So um, you can use that dimensional analysis idea to make sure that, that we have this set up correctly, right? 
So weight equals eight times V, right? That's the proportion. So it's um, weight to volume, right? So we have this equation and then uh, part B says, now assume the bucket you are using um, weighs 10 pounds, right? So how would that change things? Well, whatever the weight of the water would be, we would have to add in 10 pounds for the weight of the bucket, right? <clears throat> so if I let this be W1, right, subscript one, then I'll let this be W2. So if we consider this in the second, um, if, now if we consider the weight of the bucket, we would have this scenario, right? The weight, the, the weight including the bucket would be eight times V plus 10, right? Would be my new equation. And again, I have this plus 10 because this is the weight of the bucket. So bucket weight. And notice it doesn't matter how much water I put in the bucket, right? Um, the bucket is, is going to be 10 pounds. It's not dependent on V, right? So now we have a table to fill in. So fill in the table of values for both functions, right? So to find so to find um, this this value, I'm going to put zero into W, right? So this is W1, and this is W2, right? If you will. So W1, when we plug zero in, is going to be eight times zero, which equals zero, right? So that's zero. If I plug um, zero into W2, right? W2 would be eight times zero plus 10, which leaves me with just 10, right? So this would be 10 here. Um, so if I plug in 0.5 into W1, right? So W1 would be equal to eight times 0 0.5, which is equal to four, right? So this would be four. And then to find W2 when I plug in 0.5, um, so this would be plus 10, I would get what, 14, right? So this would be 14. Right, so keep doing this. Um, so to speed things up, I'm going to go ahead and fill these in. Right, so all we're doing is plugging in uh, these values to find the W's. Right, so another way to think about it and relate it back here, these are my X's and these are my different Y's. Right, so I'm plugging in these are my inputs and I'm trying to get outputs out. Right, so if I put one in, this would be eight times one, which is eight. Right, 1.5 for this would be um, eight times 1.5, which is 12. And then here we do eight times two, which is 16. And then here would be eight times 2.5, which is 20, right? So then all of these would just be 10 more, right? So this would be 18, 22, 26, and 30, right? So we're adding 10 in for the bucket. So now it asks us to point, um, plot the points and the sketch the graph of both functions, right? So to to graph a linear function, right? We can do this by plotting points, right? So I could um, you know plot some points. So like we do have zero zero in the first um, with the first function w, and then one eight, right? So if this is one, uh, we would go. So let's do four eight. Then we plot this point, right? And then uh, for two, we have 16, right? So here's, um, so this is four, eight, and we'd have 12 and then 16. So I go to two and plot this point, so forth, right? And if I connect the dots, uh, this would give me W1, right? The graph of W1, right? So you can certainly do this by hand as you used to. Um, but I'm gonna do this in, in Excel, right? So let me go back up so I have the table handy. Let me open up Excel. Go split screen. Whoops. All right, so we have V. W1 and then I'll say W2, right? So we have zero and then notice we're adding 0.5 each time so I could just do equals, so I'll reference this plus 0 0.5 and then we wanna go until we get to 2.5, right? So down to here, 
Um, and just for convenience for me, I'm going to center all this text, right? Just to make it look nicer and neater. So the function for W1, right, is take eight times whatever is over here V. So I can do equals eight times A2, hit enter, and then I can fill this down and that will work appropriately, right? And then W2, I can hit, so that function is equals eight times V, so eight times V, which in this case is eight two plus 10, right? So then I can fill this down. So there's all of my values that we got before, right? So to get the graph, um, I can highlight this text, go to insert, and then we want a line graph. So I'm going to pick um, pick this one, line with um, markers. Uh, but one thing I, I do want to do is this, this isn't highlighting my data correctly. It's not recognizing my data correctly. So if I go to select data, um, we need to fix some things here. Um, so, so the horizontal label should be this, these, right, the V's. That's my X, so I'm going to hit OK. And then I need to remove V from, from my, my legend, right? Um, then if I hit OK, uh, this should be be the graph, right? Um, new. So this this is kind of weird, right? How this selected that. So let me go back to edit this horizontal, and I'm just gonna pick zero to two point five, right? Hit OK, OK. Um, that's better, right? Right? Yeah, so that, that looks good, right? Uh, so we could change the chart title, right? So maybe you want to call this weight of the bucket, a weight of water plus bucket. All right, so here's here here's a graph uh, demonstrating that for us. All right. All right. So you'd want to, um, you know, you could do that by hand or put in um, a plot. From from Excel, right? So I come over here, right? So another um, another version of this graph that I got is the following, right? So we can just copy and put this in. Um, hang on. Um, Here's here's the graph that we got. All right? So the only thing different that I did in Excel is I just changed how it looks. Um, so I put this line in here where it's zero, and then I made um, the colors red and blue, right? Just just as a preference. So you can do that if you'd like, right? So I showed you how one way you can get get this graph. Um, so here's just another version. So part E is asking us, how does the constant rate of eight pounds per gallon show up in the graph, right? So just to write this down, right? Eight pounds per gallon, right? Is equal to eight pounds per one gallon, right? So 
one one thing to make the connection is if 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 I look at this blue line, if I go up eight, so maybe about here, right? So this is going up eight, and then if I follow this over on the graph, this lines up to one, right? So this would be going to the right one, right? Well, what the connection is, right? So remember, slope is my my change in y over change in x. Right, or my vertical change, which I go up eight units, and then my horizontal change, which I went to the right one unit, is equal to eight, right? So how this shows up, this constant rate of eight pounds per gallon shows up in the graph, that's my slope, right? And if I look at the red line, that's also the slope, right? If I go up eight, so like up to about 18, right? And then go over, this matches up with this point, which is at one. So how does it show up in the graph? It's the slope, right? Is 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 a way you could put it simply, right? So how it shows up in the graph is it's the slope. It's the slope, right? And if you wanted to um, if you if you wanted to make this a little like go, go into more detail right to make sure you understand what uh, what this what this means um, right then you could type the following right so let me get a text box here um, maybe do like 18 font. So we could say the rate can be thought of as eight pounds per one gallon. So to get from one point to the next, we go up eight pounds, which is the rise, right? And right one gallon which is the run. Right, so remember another way to think of slope is rise over run, right? Slope equals rise over to run. Right? So I'm trying to make this connection of how it shows up in the graph and how it's the slope, right? So we could say that. Um, and then we could say this rate is referred to as the slope of the line because it quantifies the steepness of the line and is often remembered as the ratio of rise over run. Right? Oops, I had a typo here. Right? So that's like a A plus answer, right? It's making so so before I didn't I, I made that connection more visually, where here it's more in words. Right, so you want to be able to replicate something like this, right? Being able to make that connection and really spell out why it's why it's the slope, right? As as we did. So slope is just a ratio, right? It's a special type of ratio of rise over run, change in y over change in x. And um, in the coming section, we're going to explore slope even further, right? So let's try number three. Oops. So let me get rid of that. So number three is the the cost is proportional to the number of tickets you buy at the fair at a rate of two dollars per ticket. All right. So we have two variables, right? Cost and number of tickets. So I'm gonna let C equal to cost, and I'm gonna use capital T for the number of tickets. Right? So an equation we could get from this is cost equals 2t. Right? So this could represent the, the this proportional relationship. Now part B is now assume there's a fixed cost of $15 to get into the fair. Write down the new equation. So again, I'm going to let this be cost 1. And so my cost 2 then, if I'm, I'm assuming there's this $15 fixed fee, um, we would take 2 times t plus $15. Right? 
so it's not free to get in. Where in this case, we're, we're, we're thinking it's free, right? Free to get in, like plus zero, right? So we have C1 equals 2t and uh, C2 equals 2t plus 15, right? Those are the two equations. So now we want to be able to fill in the table of values for both functions, right? So you can certainly do this by hand. Um, or again, let's uh, explore how to do this in Excel. So let me get, um, get my Excel worksheet. Right, so how this would change is we have T here, and I'll say C1 and C2. Right. So my tickets, number of tickets, the table starts at zero and goes up by five each time. So to do this, I could do equals, hit this cell, plus five. Then we could fill this down till we get to 25. So then C1, right, if you remember, so my C, C1 was equal to 2t, and C2 was equal to 2t plus 15, right, that we found on the previous page. So now I just need to enter these in. So to find this box, I would hit equals 2 times t, which is over here, right, and hit enter. And then I can just fill this down, right? Because I, do, I don't want A2, I don't want that fixed at all. I want that to pull down as it goes down, right? And then for this, I can hit equals, and then 2 times T, which is in cell A2, whoops, times this cell, and then plus, um, we want to add 15, right? So then I can fill this down, and there's my table of values that, that you should get, right? So you can do this by hand, um, or in Excel, you'll get the same values. So now we want to be able to plot these points and ske sketch a graph, right? So again, let's explore how, how do I make um, this graph in, in Excel, right? <clears throat> so let me um, walk through how, how to make a, a, a line graph, right? So I'm going to highlight this and go to insert and this time let's try recommended charts all right so if I hit recommended charts uh, we get some options um, we want uh, something that looks like this right this graph so that's just another way you can go about it sometimes recommended charts you can find what you're looking for right and there are some different options um, depending on how you want it to look um, you know, whatever whatever makes you happy there, right? So I think I'll use I'll use this chart, right? And then we can go over here and change the chart title. So maybe we want to call this uh, cost of tickets. And um, notice I don't have any labels on my axes, so maybe I go to art add chart element add axis title primary vertical so this is number of tickets right number of tickets and along the y axis so we're going to go to axis titles and then primary vertical we have um, dollars right so i'm just going to use the dollar sign um, and it's labeled that the blue is c1 and orange is c2 so so this looks good right this is a good graph Right, so there, there's a linear representation of, of these graphs, right? So I can just hit copy, and I can paste this over here. Um, oops. All right, so it doesn't want to move. All right, let me try this again. All right, so I want to put it up here. All right, well, it still doesn't want to move up on me into the one note, right? But that's the graph. Um, let me try one more time. Nope, really doesn't want to move up there. 
Hmm. Not sure why that is. One more time, if this doesn't work, um, you'll just have to bear with me. Okay, so this graph should be right here, right? Not a big deal. Uh, we'll just move on, right? Rather than waste, waste, wasting time, right? So I apologize, I couldn't put it right there, but um, it's the same same thing. So now we want to say, well, how does this constant rate of two dollars per ticket show up in the graph? Well, again, it's my slope, right? Rise over run. So every time I go, um, I go up two dollars so if I go up to into the right one I'm gonna run into another point right so to say to say this in words right, again we can just use the other one as our guide we could say the rate can be thought of as two dollars per one ticket so to get from one point to the next we go up two dollars and this is my rise and write one ticket which is my run right this rate is referred to as the slope of the line because it quantifies the steepness of the line and is often remembered as the ratio of rise over run. Right? So it's just using that example as our guide and, and that's how we can tweak that sentence, right? To put it in context of this. Right? Just to point out also from from this problem, um, my slope is two, right? Which is two to one, which would be the same thing as if we did um, 10 over five, right? If I multiply top and bottom by five, we get an equivalent fraction or a ratio, right? So 10 to five. So on the graph, if I go up 10 to the right five, I'll run into another point, right? So if I go up, 10, right? So let me see if I can write on this. So if I go up 10 and then to the right 5, I run into a point here, right? So you can see how that's uh, the same, right? All right, so then lastly, number 4, um, we have the distance we drive is proportional to the time driving at a constant speed of 40 miles per hour. We want to write a write an equation again for this proportional relationship, right? So I, I I'll use d for distance and t for time, right? So you could write that out, right? So d would equal uh, 40t. Instead of using subscripts, I'm going to use a capital D for the next one, right? So part B is now assume the distance driven includes the 100 miles you've already drove, right? So this would be 40t plus 100, right? So we already drove 100, um, so we're just adding that in. That's a constant, right? So now fill in the table for both values, right? So we need to fill in this table. So again, we just plug in 0 all the way through 5 into our function and get that. Um, so you can use do it by hand, which you should know know how to do, or we can use I'll use Excel, right? So let me um, me delete what I wrote there, right? So we have T, which is in hours, D, which is in miles, 
and capital D, which is also in miles. All right, so we can include the units there in our table if you'd like. Just makes things a little clearer. And we want to go up by one each time, so I hit plus one. And I can pull this down till we get to five. Oops, need to go down one more. All right. So then for this equation, we're just going to take whatever's in T and multiply by 40. So 40 times T, and we get that, right? In this box, we're going to take uh, 40 times T and then add 100 to it, right? So I can pull down, oops, pull down both of these, and we get all of those values, right? So you could fill in your table from, from these, right? And then now, um, let's sketch a graph of the function, right? So if I select my data, again, we can go to insert. Um, recommended charts is, is not so bad, right? But we, we need to just scroll down and pick one that looks right. So we want one with two lines in it, right? Like this. Click OK. And this could be a graph of, of our function, right? Um, so again, you could pick one that may, maybe we'll pick this one this time, right? This graph, which looks perfectly fine. And then I can go in here and change the title. So maybe we just want to call this distance. Um, another thing that, that's missing that's important are my axis titles. So I can add these in, vertical and horizontal. And then maybe here we let this be hours. And here we just say this is um, time, or no, miles, right? That's in terms of miles. Uh, also, something else that's missing is we don't have an axis. So we can add that in for vertical. And now we have a primary axis also, right? Um, so that looks good, right? This graph looks good. So I'm not gonna again. I'm not gonna copy and paste this over here, but but you should be able to sketch or be able to replicate this in Excel. Get a graph, something like this, right? Something that has the same meaning. All right. So the 40 miles per hour is the slope in this case, right? So 40 miles per hour means 40 miles per one hour. So if I come over here to my table, right? If I go up 40, I go up 40 and then to the right one, I'll land at a point, right? Also, you know, 40 miles per hour is the same thing as 80 miles in two hours, right? So if I look at uh, one of my my graphs, right? Because they're both, they both have a slope of 40. So if I take one of these and I go up 80, and then to the right two, I land at a point, right? If I go up 80, and then to the right two, I land at another point, right? So that, that's what's always going to happen, right? So it's going 80 to the right two, 80 to the right two. So that would be true on this line, right? If I go up 80, and then to the right two, I land at this point, right? So up 80 to the right two. Um, so that, that slope is, is going to be constant, right? It's a constant rate of change. So again, to make this connection, we could uh, type this up. So let me um, type this up for you. So we can just use what I had previously as my model. So we could say the rate can be thought of as 40 miles per one hour. So to get from one point to the next, we go up 40 miles, which is the rise and write uh, one hour, which is the run. This rate is referred to as the slope of the line because it quantifies the steepness of the line at, and is often remembered as the ratio of rise over run, right? So that's how we could change that sentence to fit to fit this neat, to fit this context, right? All right, so that's the the end of this worksheet.
Um, so if you have questions, you know, make sure you're reading in the text before watching my videos, right? So remember this class is uh, flipped format, so you're reading the textbook, and then we're doing the worksheets as we would in class, and then being able to do the homework and the assignments, right? All right.